All right, welcome back. We're continuing from where we left off earlier. Uh, we left off after messing around with our uh, our dependencies and plugins. We now have these warnings about declaring dependencies in our palm that we're not actually using. So we'll go ahead and fix those now. Uh, this last one is probably the easiest one to fix. SLF4J is our logging implementation. So we had a logging line in here and we deleted it. In fact, that's what this little red arrow is. So I can put that back and automatically pull our, our imports in. So let's go ahead and actually use that. So we'll, we'll say so we're starting here at the end just to have a logging line in here so that we're using our logger. So that'll solve that problem. Now for these other uh, Jetty problems, we added these dependencies uh, earlier. So let's go ahead and refresh our Maven to make sure that it, it picked up those dependencies that we've added. And uh, so we, we added dependencies so that we could add uh, support for uh, updating our server, our Jetty server, to be able to host web, app, uh, web pages that we put into our project directory. So let's go ahead and implement those or that functionality now. We need a servlet con, not server, servlet context handler. And uh, we can optionally pass in a parameter here that tells how sessions are managed. So I think we want no sessions. So since we're doing a REST API, Basically, every single request is going to be individual. It's not part of a continuous session. So we don't need session cookies or any kind of session management, anything like that. So we'll just pass in no sessions here. Next, we need to set a context path. So we'll set just slash as the context path. So that means the servlet handler is going to basically handle every single request that comes into the server. We need to set a... Uh, a base resource directory. Uh, actually, it, it looks like uh, it takes a resource object, not a string. So we'll say resource dot new resource. Oops, fingers aren't working. Oh wait. All right, resource dot new resource. Uh, we're passing in a string. What we need to do is pass in the path to a directory that contains you know, our HTML files that we want to host. So let's go ahead and create that directory, a uh, new directory. Uh, we'll call it just www. We could call it anything. Uh, I'll stick a new file in here and drop, just drop some simple HTML in it just as an example. So now we need to specify that path here. So let's do tutorial API server uh, source main resources www. So that's the path to this directory. So what we should be able to do is like uh, when we curl the service, pass in slash you know, index.html or just slash and it will find index.html in here and serve that uh, HTML content for us. Now we also need to specify a servlet that does the processing for the requests that come in. Uh, so there's a default servlet that Jenny provides and we can tell it the, the path that we want that servlet to operate under. So basically any request that comes in uh, within this context will be handled by this servlet. <clears throat> and the last thing we need to do is add or set the handler on the server. All right, so uh, we've used, if I scroll up here, we've used some Jetty servlet things, Jetty server things, and uh, we haven't used Jetty web app, and we haven't used annotations, at least directly. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and build and see uh, what dependencies it complains about. Still, I'm definitely expecting the Jakarta one, so we haven't done anything about that. And uh, probably 
Uh, a couple jetty ones as well. Right, so jetty web app. Uh, we, are we gonna need web app? Uh, we might not need web app. For the Jakarta one, uh, we only added this to fix dependency convergence problems. So we're not gonna use this directly, but we do need it because we're using it to fix convergence problems. So what we can do in that case is update our uh, ignores to, to not care about that. So let's add another ignore unused declared dependency. In this case, it's, what is it, Jakarta annotations. I think it might actually be a dot here. Let's verify. So yeah, jakarta.annotation uh, singular and then Jakarta dot annotation dash API. Okay, so that should fix that exclude. And uh, for Jetty, it's gonna be the same thing. We need these annotations on the class path so that Jetty can use uh, the annotations that we're gonna put on our resource classes when it does searching. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one here. All right, so now we're now we're ignoring both of those. Now Jetty Web App, I'm not sure if we actually end up needing or not. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, let's update or let's reload Maven, and then let's run this tutorial API server. Wait for the build to complete. Okay, so we're up and running. We've got our log message. We're listening on port eight four four three. So now I can curl dash SK. So S, S means uh, quiet mode or silent mode. K is insecure, meaning don't complain about not knowing who the server CA is that signed the, the server certificate. And we'll curl this uh, web page down. Okay, so it returned the HTML that uh, was from our index file. Everything looks good there. This percent is uh, from Z shell. It, it adds that if there isn't a new line after the end of the output, because it doesn't want to put this prompt like at the end of this line. So it puts a percent up there to let you know that there isn't actually a new line there. It just artificially added one. Let's add a dash I in here to see the response headers as well. Okay, so we, got, we did get a 200 okay response and we've got these headers in here. Uh, we've got these dates in here, or date and last modified. Uh, I think we can turn the date header off up here. Send date header false. So that should uh, that should get rid of this line. Uh, I don't. I think it last modified will still be there, but I, I don't have a problem with this one. Uh, so we'll we'll leave that one alone. So yeah, this looks good. Uh, it's actually serving files out of this directory. If I pass in a path that it doesn't know about, it's still gonna give me a 404 because we don't have a file you know, with that path in there. Uh, but it is you know, look, looking in here, and you, know, you can see based on this line here that the default servlet that we specified here is the one that's handling uh, requests that come, basically any request that hits, uh, that starts with you know, a slash, which is everything. <clears throat> All right, so, the next thing that we can do, um, you know, just hosting web pages is good, but that's uh, we need more than that. Like we need, we're going to add some REST endpoints up here that are uh, more dynamic. It's actual you know Java code that serves our REST API. So we need to add functionality uh, or additional functionality to get uh, you know more dynamic responses for our REST API. We don't just want to serve static files. So let's go ahead and create a servlet holder. Uh, let's actually call it API servlet holder. We're going to add this to the uh, servlet context handler that uh, we've, we've already added to our server. Uh, so let's, uh, we need a servlet container here. 
And we don't actually have the class here in the list because uh, this is a, a Jersey uh, servlet uh, class. So I'll just say uh, dot class for now, knowing that it's it's not going to be found, and we'll come back and add it in a second. So this this servlet that we're adding is going to be used to basically respond to anything that has a slash API at the beginning of the request. So if I you know if I do index.html, it's going to be served up here as a file. But if I send a slash API slash anything, then it's going to be handled by this servlet here. Uh, which will be more dynamic. So let's go ahead and add a yeah an, an init param. We want to tell it the uh, JAXRS application class that we're going to use, and we need to create this class. So I'll just put a, a to do in here for now, and we can also set the init order uh, to I guess one. That probably doesn't matter because we only we only have one server. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and delete it. Now, something that this mechanism allows us to do is, like if we wanted to host other applications, right, we can host multiple applications here. They just have to have different uh, context paths, right? So we could have slash API hosted by our API application, and then we could have slash you know, docs hosted by a docs application, or we could have multiple, um, you know, multiple, uh, applications hosted in any way that we want, right? So uh, on Rapid API, if I just go to Rapid, rapidapi.com and look at the API hub. Yeah, so if I look at, uh, I click on my apps, I should have clicked on my APIs. A little bit sluggish here. Is it coming? I don't, it seemed like it stopped loading. Let me refresh it. There we go. So yeah, within you know, my API burn uh, profile, I've got multiple applications. These are all hosted by a single uh, web server, and all I do is just have a different application, you know, running uh, the servlets and everything or I should say the REST API under a different context path for each one. So uh, this is nice and useful for, for allowing that. Okay, so a few things that we need to do. We need to include Jersey so that we can get this servlet container class. And then we need to actually create uh, an application, you know, JAXRS application class or a resource config class. Uh, so let's go ahead and kill this server and close this. And uh, let's bring this browser back over. And let's look for uh, Jersey. And we want the, the bomb. Okay, so we've got org.lastfish.jersey. The latest is 303. So I'll copy that. And we'll come over here to our top level palm. Uh, org.glassfish comes after uh, Eclipse Jetty. So I'll paste that in here. And I'll also copy this import line. So now we've got our Jersey bomb, which has all the Jersey dependencies that we could ever want. And we'll come back over here to our uh, tutorial API server. And we'll add some Jersey dependencies in here too. Uh, so Jersey is gonna provide our REST or JAXRS REST API. So I'll say use for REST API. Now, what we want is, I think, containers. And then we want the Jersey uh, container servlet. We don't need this other stuff. So this, this dependency should give us, if I do a Maven reload, that should give us our servlet container class. Okay, there we go. So that error message went away since we added that dependency. Now we also want uh, the normal Jersey server, which I think is in core. Oops. And I'll refresh this one more time. 
Okay, so now we have, you know, we have our servlet container. Now we need to add a, a class here. Now all of our REST resources are going to be inside this REST package. Uh, so I guess I guess what we'll do for now is uh, we'll pause here, and then we'll we'll pick up next time with our uh, initial REST endpoint implementation. All right, so I'll see you next time.